Good morning. Today's scripture is in Luke chapter 11 with verse 1 and then Hosea chapter 1. Let me read from Luke. Luke chapter 1. Now it happened that he was in a certain and when he had finished one, when he had finished, the disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, this is what you shall say. May your name be held holy. Your kingdom come each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins for we ourselves forgive each one who is in uh, to us and do not put us to the test he also said to them, suppose one of you has a friend and goes to him in the middle of the night and lend me uh, three loaves because a friend of mine on his travels has just arrived at my house and I have nothing and the man answered from inside the house do not bother me the door is bolted now and my children are with me in bed I cannot get up to you I tell you if the man does not give get up and give it to him uh, for friendship's sake per will make him get up and give him uh, give his all he wants. And our second reading, Hosea chapter 1. Reading of what Yahweh said through Hosea. Yahweh says to Hosea, go and get children with a whore for the country itself become nothing but a whore by abandoning Yahweh. So he went Homer, daughter of Diblaim, Eden um, bore him a son. Yahweh then said to him, call him Jezre. A little while I will punish the house of Jehu uh, for the of Jezreel and put an end to the sovereignty of the house of when the day comes, I shall break the bow of Israel and the in the valley of Israel of Jezreel. She conceived a second time and gave a birth to her. Yahweh. Then said to him, "Call her Lo Ruhama, for I shall show no more pity for the house of Israel. I shall never forget." Instead, I shall take pity on the house of Judah and shall sit not by bow or sword or force of arms, not by horse, but by Yahweh, their God. After Wien Hama, uh, she conceived and gave birth to a son. Yahweh said, call him Lo Ami. For you are my people, and I do not uh, exist for you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Jesus is teaching uh, his disciples and teaching them how to pray. And so he begins by our Father. Um, prayer is a person. It's a, praying to God is praying to one who wants to be a part of us, wants to belong, be with us, that wants to be our God, and that loves us. So it's praying our Father who 
loves and cares for us. And then holy be your name, hallowing that God is holy. We should listen to God because God is holy. Um, we should pay attention to God, believe what God says. Um, holy, loving God cares for us and can do great things for us um, if we will but ask him. Come and your will be done. Am I living in a world, God's kingdom, a world that uh, where God exists and uh, cares for us, living in a, on God's laws and God's rules, um, and that living in a world based on God's will and not my own will? Um, he goes on to say, give us each day our daily bread. Perhaps one of our biggest, we are taught in this country to be independent and to take care of our be, you know, self-providers and God is saying I will you I will give you your daily bread it doesn't mean we're supposed to sit and um, doesn't mean we're supposed to sit back and just wait for God uh, eat us but it means that we're supposed to uh, um, Trust that God will provide and not other ways that we're going to provide for ourselves. Do you hear the rent here? He's getting closer and closer. And I'm not sure what he wants, but anyhow. Um, stay our daily bread. Trust that God has the power to provide for us. And then forgive our sins. Also, forgive everyone who sins against us. Our task to forgive everyone who sins against us. To forgive us. Uh, first, accepting God is for ourselves. And then um, forgive everyone else that sins against us. Not that they forgive us, but we're willing to forgive them. And so part of our reconciliation that uh, God will, um, he will ask God for forgiveness and, uh, and seek forgiveness and then forgive other people uh, who may have sinned against us. Um, it's probably the most personal part there, uh, because it calls us to forgive um, we have a way of not forgiving even when someone seeks to reconcile with us uh, live in a world a society based on vengeance and uh, instead of forgiving, we want to get even. How? And just forgive without needing to get even. Criminal system based on getting even. Um, how can someone? <clears throat> Rather than forgive and love someone. I posted on my Facebook page, my personal page, a uh, interesting thing a couple weeks ago about when someone has uh, did a great crime uh, or wronged a group, your family or your community, instead of uh, 
person, sitting down with the person, surrounding the person by your community and spending a couple of hours person about all the good things about that person affirm all the positives of that person and uh, just lifting that person up and affirming him Jesus goes right on from prayer for forgiveness. Long-term asking. He tells that man who has a friend come in the middle of the night and he has no his friend. So he goes next door and knocks on the next door neighbor's door. And asks the next door neighbor for a couple loaves of bread so he can feed his visiting friend. And the next door neighbor is tired and in bed and doesn't want to come answer. He says, go leave me alone where everybody's asleep. And uh, the man keeps knocking and asking. And Jesus says, he's not going to give you bread because you and because you're his friend, he's going to give you bread because of your persistence. So he goes on, Jesus goes on to say, ask and it will be to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be to you. Now, I don't understand the grammar, but I'm told in the Greek, the tense that the that these words are written, these verbs, is a an ongoing tense. It's present and going. And so what Jesus is saying is ask and keep on asking. Knock and keep on knocking. Um, seek and keep seeking. Knock and keep on knocking. And and as because of your persistence, you will receive what you ask for. Um, the concluding teaching on prayer, ask and keep on asking, knock, and seek, keep on seeking that our prayers to God need to be continuous. Every once in a while, someone will say to me, isn't it about time we take off of the prayer list? And yet we leave that person on the prayer list. Um, and we keep praying and praying and praying, uh, remembering the person that's listed there. And every while we hear about a healing, we hear about someone well, uh, we hear about answers to our prayer. But it's not an overnight thing. God works in our time and in our cooperation. Sometimes uh, what God does require a lot of time to change our attitudes and to work with us to accomplish what we're asking for. So be persistent in your... Now, the Old Testament lesson on Hosea, I think it tells us a story of persistence. It is written as a... Uh, It tells us about the people of Israel, uh, the Jewish people. Now, remember there are um, 
Israel and there's Judah. And Israel is that kingdom that keeps rebelling against God, keeps doing things differently, keeps uh, turning away from God, uh, making deals with the Assyrians or the Egyptians or whoever. They try to make their way. And then there is uh, Judah, that though it goes away from God now and then, they really return to God and uh, periodically have kings store the temple and drive out all of the idol worshipers and work hard to uh, stay in touch with And Hosea is told to take a to marry a woman. One of the readings I have is go marry a promiscuous. Most of the first I, I got a stack of Bibles and see what which ones say what, and most of them say go marry or a woman of whoredom. Um, and the woman who uh, sleeps with men, so he does. And Gomer, and uh, she conceives and bears son. She conceives and bears him a son, and calls him Jezreel, because the people of uh, Israel have um, caused bloodshed in Jezreel, and now they are about to be uh, defeated in the valley of Jezreel. Uh, they will be punished for what they did originally in Jezreel. Uh, and then she bears, she conceives and has a child, a daughter, Lo Rahama, uh, which means not loved, uh, that God will no longer love Israel. Um, and this time it says she conceives and has a daughter in the child. It says she conceives and bears Hosea a son, bears him a son. Uh, this one, bearing him a daughter, she's just bearing a daughter and giving birth to it. The third time she has a son, and again it says she bears a son. Not that she bears a son for Hosea doesn't bear Hosea a son. She just bears a son. And he's told to name this son Lo Ami. Lo Ami, my people. Um, because Israel is not God's people. Um, is not God is not their God because they have turned to other gods have turned other ways to find uh, what they need, they want. And so he uh, Hosea per, persists and um, and then Gomer goes off and with other men, other places and then God tells Hosea and get her and bring her back as your wife and so he does I look at Hosea he's uh, called by God to be committed to Gomer and to continually work with Gomer and then in the and you only have to read chapters one and two to get the story because the rest of Israel um, is 
in the end, uh, he says, Israel will return to God and become numerous people and reunite with uh, with the Judeans, with Judah, and the two will become one nation again. And uh, that that is what Hosea is proclaiming of Judah. Uh, <clears throat> just as Gomer's will become one family, uh, even though they are of their fathers. Uh, as I say that, I'm thinking of a family that I knew, and uh, they came to one of our churches, which we gave a bicycle to one of the kids. And this one kid got, and uh, we needed the kid's name because we wanted a public uh, because the bicycle was given to us by Walmart, and we wanted to give them some credit and also lift up the child's name and put her picture and, and we said well what's her last name we asked her older brothers and sisters uh, and one of the kids turned to the other kid and said, well which one is she and the kids had several different Hosea is patient and Hosea loves of Gomer and so even though they are called not my child, uh, it, it says, then, uh, old, you are the children of God. Hosea will become their father and will be the, uh, and they will be his children, even though they by another person um, in this book in against god and god's patience as the people rebel there is division and then there is this reconciliation gomer betrayed uh, but he uh, but hosea goes out and embraces her as his wife again. Um, he has a time where they don't have anything, any physical contact with each other, but he brings her back and they go through that time of uh, no physical. And finally they come back and there's a sense that they, just like Judah and Israel are going to be reunited. And it happens through patience and waiting um, that they become reconciled. Their reconciliation requires total forgiveness, change of heart, and growing into a new relationship. It's not overnight. It requires time doing uh, sometimes we forget the time in reconciliation someone can say i'm sorry that i did wrong and we will uh, okay i accept your apology and that um and yet there needs to be a healing and a time of learning to trust each other again learning to trust someone has betrayed you you need to develop trust again um, we that are not trusting each other that need to learn that trust there are also uh, that have broken apart and separated and uh, learn that trust and need to grow back together. Congregations need to 
another. Two different congregations that don't speak. I've mentioned friends of ours that were looking for a Quaker uh, meeting and they knew that there was something between five and there was like a, a strong with each other. And they finally found out that it was all over that happened during the Revolutionary War and they still hadn't reconciled with each other since the Revolutionary War. We have the groups separating apart in the United Methodist Church. And I wonder if this word from Jose has anything to do with bringing the groups together and to being reconciled with each other. This week in the news, problems between political parties and problems within the Republican Party and a call for reconciliation. It's not a call for reconciliation, a need for reconciliation, a need for parties to come back together with each other and the opposing factions to quit criticism and start working with each other. And um, things where reconciliation can happen. And then there's freedom from God. Have you done something that you think uh, alienates you from God or alienates the church? And how can you be reconciled? If something the church has done to you, uh, can you forgive something that's, uh, that you blame on God? And can you get can we be united with God? Can we learn to trust God, call God an affectionate name, whatever works for you as in the pray to God, or they'll stir and rewrite it, and it doesn't say our Father, because they need to put a different of someone who is affectionate and who they trust. Um, together and trust in God. Um, trust that God's going to provide for what we need in our lives. And uh, challenge to wait for God's response. Responses. God is working, like I said, in our time. God us to respond to God and respond in uh, and acceptance and forgiveness and you have the time you continually be lifting up your concerns to god and your needs to god pray again the lord's prayer as we know it not as it's written in the bible but as we know it today our father who art in heaven be thine thy kingdom come thy will be done is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Our trespasses. Forgive us our sins. Uh, forgive others who have trespassed against us, who have sinned against us. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the power and thine is the glory forever and ever, and new relationships. Amen.